Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. So in this video I am continuing my fill the world project where I am creating houses for all of the empty lots in each of EA's worlds. So this time I am building in Oasis Springs. This is uh, on the lot called Dusty Turf. Um, and this is kind of like the mid-century modern type of neighborhood. So that's kind of the vibe of a house that I went with this time. Uh, so this is the Wentworth house and I came up with that name because when I was looking online at inspiration for mid-century modern houses, um, I found a picture online that I really liked of a house, so I'm kind of loosely basing this house off of that. And it was on a website that was called like Wentworth Architecture or something like that. So I was like, alright, cool, this is now the Wentworth house because as I've learned from doing this, I am very bad at coming up with names for residential lots. Um, because prior to this, I had been doing um, a project called Build Newcrest Community Lots Edition, where I had been working on community lots for all of Newcrest. Um, and for that, it was actually easier for me to come up with um, a, a name for the businesses, because it was like, what do I name this business, or what do I name this park? And with a house, it's like, well, this is a house, and that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> And I didn't want to call this just like mid-century modern house or mid-century house because I feel like those are, you know, that's like a, that's like the easy way out. You know, I wanted to do something a little bit more creative. So, um, but yeah, so this is obviously kind of styled to be more of a mid-century modern house, which, um, I don't tend to do very many modern builds. I think I've done one once before on this channel. Um, but it's just not something that I'm very comfortable with because where I live, we don't have very many modern houses. So it's not something I see a whole lot of. And as a result, I just, I tend to gravitate more towards like traditional or like, you know, kind of like a contemporary suburban style. Um, but I'm with this project that I'm doing, I'm creating houses that suit the neighborhoods that they're going in. So obviously in this neighborhood, that would stick out like a sore thumb because literally every other house is like a mid-century modern styled house. Um, so yeah, this is a two bedroom, two bathroom house. Um, it's a little bit big for that many bedrooms, I think, but I don't know. I really, I cut it out of this video. I really struggled with the floor plan for this house. Um, I had a good idea of what the outside should look like because, you know, I had found a picture on the internet to help me with that. Um, and obviously, you know, with there's there's always going to be some limitations in The Sims 4. Like, I think this house traditionally would have actually been a split-level house and not a two-story house. But we can't really do, like, a proper split-level in The Sims 4. Like, there is sort of a way to do it, but it's more of, like how to create a sunken living room than it is actually a split level house. So I wasn't going to do that. Um, but anyways, so I, yeah, I really struggled with the floor plan here. Obviously the stairs kind of had to be over to the one side because that's where the upstairs part of the house is. And then I sort of built around that. Um, so the one interesting thing about how this house is laid out eventually, um, is that I put the kid's bedroom on the first floor which is not something I normally do. Uh, just because from like a practical standpoint, it doesn't make a lot of sense because like, who would put their kid's bedroom right next to the front door? Like, it's one thing when they're little and it's like, okay, please don't wander away. But then once they're a little bit older, like that's just an invitation for like teenagers to sneak out of the house late at night. So maybe not practically the best decision, but the space worked out better for it to be a kid's bedroom downstairs than it did to be the master. So, and that way then I wanted to have a bathroom that was accessible from like the main portion of the house where you don't have to walk through someone's bedroom to get there. Um, and I couldn't figure out a way to do like a smaller half bath somewhere and have it not stick out and look strange. Um, so that's, that's kind of why I did that the way that I did. Um, I don't know if I had to go back and do it all over again that I would do that necessarily. But you know, I'm learning. I'm not, like I said, I'm not very comfortable yet with modern houses. And so this is kind of like, you know, baby steps for me. 
Uh, the other thing that I did, which I'm pretty sure actually in my last speed build video, I said I don't understand why people do this, but I actually like blocked off some of the little fake columns that I had built on the outside of the house. Um, I blocked them off <laughs> just so that the inside of the house's rooms were shaped a little bit better. Um, and again, I realized that I had said previously that I didn't understand the point in doing that. Well, I changed my mind. So, you know, it, it comes with the territory of being a woman. I get that right. I get to change my mind. Um, so I did. Uh, I, again, I don't know that that's something I'll always do, but if I think if it makes the build better, then I'm going to do it. Um, so the other thing that I also never really do that I did in this build was I stuck with like an orange color scheme for a lot of it. Like the kitchen is orange, the living room couches are orange, uh, the master bedroom has like orange and brown furnishings in it. I don't know. I was just, I was really feeling the, the orange because to me, mid-century modern is like a very like 1960s style of architecture and like by that point people were kind of branching out into doing funkier colors like oranges or like murkier greens and things like that and so I always kind of associate the two also because I think if I'm remembering correctly so the house on the Brady Bunch which was a mid-century modern house I'm pretty sure that their kitchen is orange in that house as well um, and I could be, I could be misremembering that. It's been a very long time since I've watched the Brady Bunch. Um, but I'm pretty sure that it was. Also, this is like kind of old news at this point, but did you guys hear about the, the Brady Bunch house drama that happened? I mean, it's not really drama. It all turned out okay. But, um, so Lance Bass from NSYNC, so, you know, favorite band of my youth, um, the Brady Bunch house had gone up for sale on the market. Um, and so he had put in an offer to buy it and he wanted to like renovate it and restore it back to its former glory. Cause I guess since, you know, the house was originally built 50 to 60 years ago, the inside has been changed a lot, which, you know, I get, but, um, so he put in this offer. He thought he was going to get it. And then he was actually told by the listing agent that his bid was the top bid. So like, he's thinking, great, I'm gonna get this awesome Brady Bunch house. Like he was posting on it, about it on Twitter and uh, the actress who played Marsha? Marsha or Jan? One of, the, I don't, the actress who played one of the girls on the Brady Bunch tweeted back at him about how excited she was. And he was like, yeah, you're gonna be, you know, a guest at my first dinner party if you'd like to. And you know, like he was all excited. And then it turned out that after he had been told that he his bid won, that his bid didn't actually win, and that he was outbid by a corporation who said that they would spend any amount of money to make it possible to buy this house. And so, like, there was no way he could, you know, come back from that because he's not a corporation with a bottomless pit of money to spend on buying a house. So obviously he had to back out and say like, okay, well, I'm not going to get into a bidding war with someone who literally will stop at nothing. Like that's kind of pointless. So, uh, there was like a, a day or so, I guess, where it was like, well, you know, big, bad, evil corporations, like, you know, what, what are they trying to pull type of thing? And it turned out that the, the evil corporation was HDTV. And so then, uh, Lance was like, well, if it has to be any corporation, I'm glad it's them because I mean, it's the home and garden TV network. So like, obviously they're going to take care of the house and you know, who knows, maybe they'll end up filming a TV special there or something. I have no idea. But uh, as opposed to somebody where, you know, maybe they buy it and they don't really take good care of it. And, you know, like that's always a concern. Um, or like, you know, maybe God forbid they would just tear it down or something. But so high hopes here that HGTV will treat the Brady Bunch house right. Um, so anyways, so that was also kind of loosely, I think, my inspiration for doing this house. Um, so yeah, so I don't know. I just... This is kind of a fun build for me because it kind of forced me to 
uh, think a little bit differently and use objects a little bit differently, like I can safely say that TV stand, I have never used that in my life in The Sims 4. I mean, I know it's been in the game. It's actually not a horrible looking TV stand. It's just stylized and it's stylized so much that I don't know. I think it's it's one of those items that it's difficult to blend in. Um, the other thing is that because I tend to use um, the TVs that are wall mounted as opposed to like tabletop types of TVs, uh, I don't tend to use TV stands much anyways. Um, I do realize that in this build and the last build that I did, that's not entirely true because I wound up using another like tabletop TV. Oh no, I'm yawning. Oh, that's terrible. So I actually, uh, this is like my third attempt at recording this voiceover. The first time, things were going really well. And I was like two and a half minutes into my video and my doorbell rang. And of course, my sweet little dog who uh, tends to anymore spend most of her waking hours and sleeping hours for that matter at my side got all excited about this doorbell and then she started barking and barking and barking and I was like ugh why and like keep in mind I'm recording this at like 8 o'clock at night so it's not super late but it's late enough that like I don't want to answer the door right now <laughs> so please don't ring my doorbell so then the person rang the bell again I was like okay what gives here and like our, our office is in the front of our house. So like it's dark outside. Well, sort of dark. It's like twilight outside. I have lights on. I'm very clearly like sitting at a computer so they could see me. And yet they rang the bell. Like I'm obviously not getting up at that point, people. Like let it go. So and then so yeah, so my dog got all upset and she was running around barking. And then <laughs> this is the best part. So my husband had been taking a nap and he woke up when he heard the dog bark. And he comes out of our room and he's like, I'm late. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, no. He thought it was like the next morning and that he was late for work. I was like, no, it, you've just been napping. <laughs> like, he, You did not sleep straight through until morning. So yeah, it, it's been quite an eventful evening for me. <laughs> and then I tried to record it again. And I don't know, I said something like I misspoke or mixed up my words or which a lot of times I know that I misspoke. Miss, see, just like that. A lot of times I know I misspeak and I mix up my words, but more often than not, I just let it go because you know what I'm trying to say. And half the time I fix what I'm saying anyways, but so I don't remember what I had said before that was like wrong, but whatever it was, it was incorrectly said enough that no one would understand what I was saying. And I was like, I should probably just start over at this point. So yeah, it's, it's been fun. It's been it's been really fun. I have to say, like, in the last, like, couple of days, I feel like my pregnancy symptoms have changed again. Um, like, I've gone from being, like, so when I, when I first found out I was pregnant, uh, one of the first things that I noticed, actually, was that my sense of smell had been heightened. Like, I woke up, and I was like, my hair stinks, and, like, it wasn't super dirty. It just, I just really could smell it. And so throughout my pregnancy, that's kind of been like a, a recurring thing is that every, every few weeks, all of a sudden, like my sense of smell just goes like completely haywire. And I just, I can really smell everything. And so that had kind of tapered off a little bit, but now it's back. So now I'm back to really being able to smell everything. Um, I've also felt like in the last few days that I've gotten a lot bigger, like very quickly. Like, I don't, I, I'm sure I probably have, but it was just like, it's still kind of a weird sensation for me. Cause like I have, I've, I have felt pregnant for a little while, but I don't know that I've always outwardly looked pregnant. And I feel like I'm now starting to get to the point where like people who don't know that I'm pregnant, who will see me might actually start to think like, oh, hey, that lady's pregnant. So, which is kind of a good thing. Cause like, I don't know that I, I like that people know that about me, but like, it's still a weird thing for me to think about myself. So 
that's also been kind of fun. Like, I'm definitely starting to have like more symptoms and like it's becoming more difficult for me to do things like reach my feet <laughs> or, you know, like get comfortable when I'm laying down in bed at night and things like that. All those, all those like fun things that like you hear about and you're just like, oh, that's not that bad. And then it happens to you and you're like, wow, this is actually not fun at all and kind of terrible, but you know. So I'm really just trying to remind myself like it will be worth it in the end because you know in the end we'll have our daughter and that'll be exciting so yeah um so i've realized i've spent very little time actually talking about this build in particular but i don't really have much else to say about the build itself um you know it's it's a nice little house I, again i'm not super familiar with doing like a modern or mid-century modern style of build so if it's terrible, go easy on me. That's all I ask. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I, I It was fun. I think it's definitely something I'm going to try to experiment more with in the future. Um, just because, you know, I'd like to broaden my horizons and try new things. That's always a good, a good time. Um, and it's actually, it's a lot of fun for me too, to like use things in the game that I don't always get to use. Even just little things, like that fence that I just put up around the patio area. I, I've i hardly ever used that fence. But it's a nice little fence. I like it. It's just one of those things that I never really used very much of. Um, so, yeah. Um, and because, you know, this is still a family house. I did put in the backyard. I put it, actually, I put it in the toddler, like, waiting pool. Uh, which, actually, I don't know that I've ever played with since Seasons came out. That's just been one of those items that, like, before it came out, I was all excited for it. And then since then, I'm like, eh. I've never... And it's not like... I just forget that it exists. I don't know. It's just not something I think about a lot. So, yeah. So now that I'm like, hmm, I should use the toddler pool. Now I think I might use it more. <laughs> um... But yeah, also, so yeah, you'll see me messing around with this roof for a very long time. I couldn't figure out how to get it so that the um, trim on the roof didn't poke through the wall up there. Um, so eventually, my solution is to just change the roof trim on that part to be almost the same color as the wall surface itself. So that was my quick and easy solution there. I'm sure there's probably a better solution out there. I just couldn't come up with one. So. Yeah, so anyway, so this is the Wentworth house. Um, it's currently available on The Sims 4 Gallery. You can get to it either using the link in the description below this video, or you can search on the gallery. Uh, make sure you select newest first, because uh, right now it defaults to currently most popular. So select newest and then search for either my username, which is Mrs. Tomato 1018, or the hashtag Mrs. Tomato 1018. Um, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, you can do so down below. I put out a new video every single day, Monday through Friday. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.